So we'll try to um, slow down the lopsided engagement aspect just by giving our destroyers something to do. Oh gosh. Okay, well, it's certainly chaotic. The Prince Oigan has to react because of this mess. Make sure we get the Adria more into position. Okay, St. George. Oh gosh, Jupiter's still just getting wrecked, but she's doing okay. She's holding up despite the fact that, you know, they definitely have her, her number. Something like this. Where is the Ishtvan going? My gosh. All right, more hits on the Marengo. Well, different Marengos. One here, heavy damage now because of the six inch contributions. Very good. And then it looks like all the different Marengos were hit, which is good. We do need those to do something eventually. <laughs> and here comes my destroyers. I, yeah, so this is probably already close enough that we can start getting the engagement going. Let's slow them down a little bit. Yep, I knew it. I, I feared that they would start taking hits, but okay, we gotta get these light cruisers out of the way. Give these guys a little bit of time. The Prince Oigan, I don't know what happened to the Ishtvan. She's just really doing her own thing. But that's fine. Uh, we'll just allow her to slowly make her way back into formation. A good turn. Six inch shells, not gonna do much. Got some 13 inch shells in this one. Uh, turret disabled on the fronds temporarily. She is taking a pounding though. Okay. 13 inch shell on the Marengo. 13 inch on their Dreadnought. Hmm. I got another turret disabled. This one on the Kaiser now. How are our destroyers doing? I don't see any torpedo launches. They are probably probably trying to engage the destroyers, and what we want to do is actually get them to yeah go ahead and just engage the battle cruisers. Those that's that's completely fine with me. They are heading at us, and this is the best time to <laughs> launch your torpedoes. You know, the perfect time. And our destroyers survive one more turn. Hopefully that gets us one more one turn closer to launching torpedoes. And we are landing a few more hits on this dreadnought. Remember the damage accumulates and does allow you to slowly wear down their gunnery accuracy, that their rate of fire decreases the more damage they take. So for all those reasons, we just hope that we can continue getting shots on target. Rome was not built in a day, and a ship was not sunk with a single shell. Well, that's not technically entirely true, but in general, you don't sink ships instantly like that. We could even target this Marengo class that has taken heavy damage. Yeah, we can do that, why not? We are already launching some, you know, launching it at this ship might just have the effect of following through and hitting the other ships. So it's good that we are launching some torpedoes there. Okay, meanwhile, Franz is just really, really, I, I see the red tilt. How's she doing? Like, can we get an in-depth report? 12 heavy hits, wow. She's taken a lot of damage. Her max speed is down to 20 itself. Well, we'll keep going 19, though. Um, yeah, there's nothing really I can do. I think we just continue on course. Yeah, let our destroyers just kind of do their thing for a little bit. And I think we should be winning this engagement overall, just because our ships are superior. So again, another Marengo class hit. Another Dreadnought hit. Oh, yeah, we actually are disabling some of their... Sh you know, those are both on the port side, which is the one that... No, sorry, starboard side. Um, and the one which is the side engaging us. So that's good. It's actually good news. Lots of torpedo launches going on now. So let's pull these guys back. They've done their job. Look at the Duquesne's both pulled back. This is exactly what I wanted. Like, this is just perfect. Just perfect. So we're gonna do a really hard turn away and we'll actually just to make things a little bit better, we'll begin deploying smoke. Wow, the perfect. So we actually sank that Marengo class with instantly with a torpedo. Really, really, really good job. So the 
Python, the Spilato. These guys are outdated too. These guys are the old de destroyer class, the Panthe class, but still really putting in work. And they've launched a lot of their torpedoes. The Python only one holding on to her. I don't know why, but the Panther, the Python, I mean, decided to hold on to her entire, <laughs> her entire payload of torpedoes, but that's fine. Okay, so instantly sinking that ba battleship, wonderful. Getting the battle cruisers to turn away, uh, that was the main goal. This is a bonus, but um, this is obviously what we wanted to happen. That these guys are now pulling away from the engagement, which gives our dreadnoughts more time to work on thinning out the herd of battleships. Okay, speaking of, medium damage, beginning to land more shots. If you just give them a solid course to set for a long time, I think they will eventually start landing more. So now that that one's dead, can we actually focus on this guy? So I'll put you back in a manner which can actually engage him as well. Only one hit on the Marengo. That's fine. Yeah, things look pretty good. Okay, so their destroyers looks like they're coming at my destroyers. Let's get... I, you know, I have a good line of defensive units in place, to be honest. These heavy cruisers are pretty solid at defending against uh, destroyers. And we'll get the light cruisers to zoom in too. Alright, a very... So, people are launching torpedoes. I'm not sure why. That's a little bit far away, in my opinion, to launch torpedoes, but... Here we go. An invisible ship. I hate that bug. Invisible ship. Hit twice. Six inch gun. Not going to do much. How, how's this guy doing though? Light damage, okay. Six inch guns. Again, not going to do much. Medium damage though. On fire. Very good. Two very good things. <laughs> On fire. Fantastic. Medium damage. You would say though that my Franz has um, medium damage, I would say. Yeah, this one's medium damage. Maybe even heavy damage is 25. Oh, one of her turrets has actually been destroyed. There it is. We did get hit. The Splato got hit, but it was only by the light guns of the, another destroyer. And the Python had a near miss, but she still, she still survives. So we'll pull these guys away and have them go squad max just to get them out of there as fast as possible. You guys are actually getting a little bit ahead, which is not terrible because it's nice that we can kind of curve the decisions of these dreadnoughts, but okay, let's see what happened. More hits on this guy, but six inch. Okay, a good hit on this dreadnought. Destroyed one of their turrets. Oh, well, one of these 13 inch shells destroyed one of their turrets. Franz took another penetration from medium guns, which is good. Now, you don't always correctly identify medium and heavy, but I'm assuming that they're more or less correct. This was so good. We got these guys to completely turn away. I don't mind. We can chase those guys down another day. These dreadnoughts are the most expensive in terms of... Um, the most damaging to us in terms of uh, blockading effect. So they have, they're worth the most points is what I'm trying to say. So we will continue with this. Oh, Franz, man, you're just getting beaten and beaten and beaten. When is it appropriate for us to pull her off the line? I don't know. I think we should detach her now. If she goes home to the nearest port, that's going to be Cagliari, which is fantastically close. So not a bad thing at all. And I don't mind only having three and then one. That's still four dreadnoughts. I guess the risk of losing the fronds is so great that let us go ahead and detach her. If they actually say the Kaiser is also pretty beat up, but I disagree. I mean... Well, oh, crow, man, she's got three, only one of her four turrets is functional. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually stand corrected. That's a, that's a ship that's taken a beating. And the Grand Loser is two turrets down as well. What the hell's going on? So only the Prince Eugen has, well, it's, it doesn't even have all of them, just three of them. Yeah, okay, the Zent, Zent Istvan is the only ship, the only dreadnought we have with all of its turrets functional at this point. Okay, well, well I'll, st I'll hang in there for a little bit longer. Could have catastrophic, catastrophic effects, but so far just the Kaiser getting pummeled. She's almost just a tank at this point because she doesn't really have much she can do as far as firing. Two more hits on her, but we are landing still. Um, yeah, 13 inch shells on these guys. Not to mention the torpedoes that we're sometimes launching from time to time. 
Okay, let's see. It's looking good. Another hit on this guy. Yeah, I mean, they're, both fleets are losing turrets. <laughs> Very few are left with a lot of functioning turrets. Like, this guy doesn't even have any of his 12-inch guns um, available. <clears throat> Just the 7-inch guns, which we're not so worried about. Okay, but you got overstepping a little bit here. Let's bring you back down. And my destroyers successfully cleared the rest of the fleet. So we'll get them to slow down and turn off smoke. And go back to line ahead. Very good. Alright, the Grand Loser took a barrage there. Not any really good hits this turn, unfortunately. This torpedo... just gonna miss everything, I think. Yeah. Their Dreadnought pulled back. I mean, it was almost wiped out anyway. Only one 13-inch shell. And still, our heavy cruiser is still doing work here. The Donau, the Adria, doing good. Let's get these guys to not close too much. All right, the uh, Sent Ishfan is <laughs> trying to <laughs> pull itself back into the fleet here. Try to get these guys, the Adria group, to slow down just a smidge to allow the Ishvan um, in front of her, in front of them. And do kind of the same thing with these guys. Slow you down. All right. Very good. A huge, huge barrage. Medium damage, on fire. Just received four more shells. Morango class medium. Yeah, I mean, we've done a lot of damage to these ships all around. And it's true that we've also taken damage, but I feel like we've dealt out a lot more than we've been given. So, in those terms, I'm happy with the engagement. Okay, let's get the Donau to straighten out now. And actually go up to 22, because you're probably going to slow down a little bit from all that maneuvering. We're still launching torpedoes now with our um, destroyers. And they are turning away completely, which is the perfect time for us to just edge them, keep getting a full broadside off, but kind of make a move towards them. Just to make sure we don't lose uh, contact with them. And we can still get off our broadsides, etc, etc. And we'll go ahead and move our light cruisers in. This is probably also the time we should make a run with our destroyers once again. St. George, I accidentally moved her a little bit too far, but maybe not a bad thing. Okay, so let's see what we can pull out of the, the battle here. In terms of uh, finishing off some people. Okay, uh, St. George now getting involved. Destroyers are moving in very quickly. So this is going to reunite their battlecruiser and their um, other fleet. And this is also going to put us at a wind disadvantage. But I think, because these are only Duquesne classes, I, I have a feeling, it looks like they're actually trying to pick up survivors, <clears throat> that it won't matter. That the battle is basically already a success. We just need to go in, steal as many kills as we can, and we can just pull back. I really want to get a Dreadnought, though. I really want to. It's not sufficient just to get these Morango class um, Dreadnoughts. It doesn't do it for us anymore. With a 130 to 100 advantage in um, points, I suspect that we need to sink three battleships, at least, in order to uh, um, actually come out ahead on the blockade. Now, the Franz, it's just so scary, I'm actually going to disengage her. All right, go home, Franz. Go home. Thank you for all you've done. And we will reorganize our tur our fleet here. Probably we're going to launch a few torpedoes here. I mean, specifically, I'm looking at you, Python. But you've decided not to. For reasons I don't understand at all. We're, we're Let's pursue very hard. So what we could do is actually, I think I will, I'll just completely turn north. Which is going to put all of my light cruisers out of position. But it gives us the wind advantage and I think we can swing it. Whoa, didn't know that you guys were having problems. We'll get our heavy cruisers to actually lead the way since... We need somebody to lead the way, right? Oh my gosh, is the Franz really... 
I'm going to try to get the Franz out of the way, because otherwise I don't think she's going to go back to the port I expected her to go back to. We're still hitting the Marengo. Oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, I, okay, guys, that's our own. That one's already sinking. We're having the same problem again. <laughs> so even heading dead north is going to be an advantage for us in terms of the wind. So let me actually get the Prince Oigan to lead the way. And we'll get the, uh, the rest of the group to tow in behind her. Okay, the Franz is going the correct way now. These are obsolete, these destroyers, right? I think you can actually see that these are old Austrian destroyers. So they, they've actually... Oh my gosh. Okay, so that Marengo is sunk for sure. Heavy di damage on fire. We all know that though. So we've sunk two so far. Add two to the tally. Now I want these guys, if you can, actually engage this Dreadnought class. That's what I want you to engage, believe it or not. If you can. In fact, let's do that thing that you do when you want to engage. Go into battle formation. Yeah, so this is silly. Oh, that's actually a good hit. You know, a single one of those six inch shells can destroy a destroyer. Okay. Good hits on the Marengo. Ah, that's the wrong one. That's not a good hit. Bad. <laughs> not what I wanted. Okay. So, well, that's insignificant. Not that I'm really worried about that. And the important thing here is to get the Python into position because she's the one carrying, well, it looks like we're in fact not carrying very many torpedoes. <coughs> but the ones that's available are the starboard. So this should be the correct point for us, the correct formation for us to engage these ships. Blotto hit. Lots of hits on them, unfortunately, and uh, from them on us, I should say. And unfortunately, our only hits are those silly ones on a sinking ship. Dude, the sooner you guys launch... Alright, if you guys just tell Python to launch his torpedoes, you guys can turn away. I'm not trying to kill you guys. I mean, I don't mind if you die, sadly, but I also don't really want to kill you. <laughs> that just happens to be the way it goes, because... You know, Python decided he doesn't want to launch any of his torpedoes. Just not going to launch. This is the starboard side, guys. I'm I'm not a genius when it comes to left, right, but I'm pretty sure that if they're on the right side, you should be launching your right side torpedoes. Like, don't hold me to this or anything, but that's what the starboard thing means. Oh man, not having much luck at all. The Cobra looks like she's sunk, but that's fine. If she can actually get away, I'm gonna see if we can... Is she actually taking... No flooding, so we could get her away. Very good. Where did the Franz end up going? Ah, good, she actually went home. So we will do the same thing with our... Destroyer, destroyer, destroyer. Where? Oh, it's in the Scout Force. Yeah, Cobra, very good. Let's detach you. <coughs> very good. Oh, good, she went the right way as well. Oh, hey, you launched a torpedo. You did it. For some reason, the Splato didn't want to, but that's fine. You know, that's just, it's just good enough. I'm not, I'm not going to hold you to launching the last of all your torpedoes. Just that was good enough, and it looks like that's going to be a good hit. All right, we're going to pay attention to that one when I advance the next turn, but let me just make sure everyone looks like they're doing more or less the right thing here. Actually, let's get you on the inside, and you can keep going on the outside just because you're a little bit slower. Fido will blaze a path forward. Okay, all right, now let's look at this torpedo and see what we get. Oh, yes, perfect. A hip on a tor torpedo hit, fantastic, on a ship that's already pretty well damaged. These destroyers are done. I don't need them for anything anymore. I could just literally detach all of them. And yeah, at the same time that that one was hit by a torpedo, we blasted this guy with a huge barrage. Well done, sent Istvan. She doesn't really have anything left to even return fire with. <clears throat> Just these two outside 11-inch um, guns. Heavy damage means that she's probably not going to be able to engage very well anyway. So we're actually doing really well. If the Cobra actually sneaks out of here, and these destroyers looks like look like they will as well, we're in a, a really good position. We're not going to lose a single ship. 
even though I, you know, haven't been, <laughs> I've been a little cavalier with my decisions, but I think this is still fine. <clears throat> oh my gosh, this entire episode has been slightly off. I'm so sorry. I mean, this entire engagement has been slightly off. Okay, well, let's see. Which one got hit by the torpedoes? Oh, what? No, we can't, we still can't see her. She's become invisible. This is horrible. We don't want her to become invisible. We want her to be visible. We're gonna send some light cruisers over to make her life miserable, I think. Yeah, we really can't target this ship. <laughs> Yeah, we are not, we are in fact not targeting. This ship has now completely bugged out. I'm going to send my Jupiter over. Maybe we can get some kind of, some reaction. Okay, are we still hitting? We are not. It doesn't look like we're engaging it. That's the problem. You guys are fine, just do your thing. Yeah, we are not engaging that ship. That's the disadvantage here. All right, but things are really starting to go our way. Yeah, we're, we're demolishing this ship. Heavy damage, just taking a lot more too. Harpon class, getting wrecked. Yeah, I this feels really good. This feels like a really good engagement. Oh, that ship is now invisible again. Fantastic. So we will send our Jupiter over to hopefully finish her off. Prince Oigan has gotten a little ahead of herself. Although, to be honest, I don't mind... Uh, wait. Wait, where... Where is their other Dreadnought? Had two. Okay, I'm gonna go back and look at the footage here because I'm so confused. They had two dreadnoughts. Now they have one. So is this actually not the one that was the torpedo target? I, I no longer know. We certainly won this engagement. I mean, now it's just, it's all over but the crying. We have a Marengo class we're trying to chase down, but really you're just, we're laying into everything. It's just a, a shooting gallery at this point. Let's get these guys to hook in hard. I don't see the other Dreadnought. Do we like misidentify it or was it actually a Marengo class? I, I'm so confused. Huh. Well, that's the end of this engagement for sure. Looks like we're just sinking everything. There's nothing left. There's almost nothing left to sink, so we'll just run through their entire navy. Hopefully not get hit by too many torpedoes, but you know, even if that happens, I don't think any of our ships are gonna sink. We just have to protect our dreadnought group here, but I think we will. So weird that, yeah, it's so weird that they're, I think that they had another dreadnought, but where is it? <laughs> for crying out loud. Kassar class. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll just send our heavy cruisers over to work on that. Oh, okay. Lots of torpedo hits now. Very good. Get the Prince Oigan to turn just to avoid getting hit by this guy. Get our light cruisers to react. Infranet, Marengo. I just don't see where the hell is their other dreadnought. I'm not crazy. I'm sure that they had two dreadnoughts. We were pursuing them for so long, and then suddenly they just it just disappeared. I don't know if it sank and it doesn't report the grid, or if it was misidentified and it's actually a Marengo. Because I'm not counting the number of Marengos. Which which Marengo are we hitting here? See, was that originally a dreadnought? Oh my God, I'm so confused. This is very strange. I mean, this is working out. The battle is working great for us. Just. Fantastic. However, I'm so confused by this situation with the... You know, I mean, it, 
<clears throat> I think it's probably even worth going after the rest of their ships because we do have our, our ships are relatively intact and four dreadnoughts is just going to destroy two battle cruisers two heavy cruisers we we have no means of catching these guys I'm pretty sure that okay actually they're heavy cruisers we could run down but we don't have any way of catching um, their battle cruisers speed of 25 is just too fast for anything that it's exactly the role of battle cruiser is supposed to fill, right? They're supposed to be faster than anything they can't kill, and in that case, this is, I mean, this is exactly the case here. They can sink my heavy cruisers who can catch them, and they they can't sink, but they can get away from the dreadnoughts um, who they can't sink, so. Let's see, just finishing off these people. We sank that destroyer now, very good. Missing with some torpedoes. Still kind of moving towards this Marengo class, this Marengo class. This Jupiter is so brave. Has done very well for herself, I would say. Lots of hits. I guess these are all against that Dreadnought, huh? Oh, that's one, I should say. Hmm. So we will go squad max on this group. And probably continue to hunt down this these two Marengo class ships. Oops, I want you guys to turn hard, turn hard, turn hard. Because <clears throat> this is all that remains from like a complete victory. It's sinking the rest of their old ships, which still count pretty significantly for the blockade. You know, more than these heavy cruisers even, even though these heavy cruisers probably, no, these are not very good heavy cruisers. <laughs> I, I'm, I stand corrected. This one's decent. This is a good, this is a very solid, heavy cruiser, even though it's slow. Yeah, they're both very slow. Those are not good heavy cruisers. Um, one thing, if you want to play the points game, though, is you just have to have a, a lot of cheap heavy cruisers, and they all count the same for, as far as points go. So, uh, Maybe I'll detach the St. George. I was thinking it would be good to make sure this Marengo class is sinking. Yeah, yeah she's sinking on fire. And we hit that one so much, she's, she's dead. Yeah, no, never mind. I'm just going to go for the kills here. We'll split these two so that our guns can start picking them off. Torpedoes, whatever, whatever we want to use at this point. And we'll let our uh, heavy cruisers maybe absorb some fire. If we can, suck these guys into another engagement, but I, I don't think they'll be that stupid. Hopefully they are, but I doubt it. Okay. Let's make a decision here. Let's have you go for this Marengo. Uh, which one? There. So you pull off and go for that one, and these guys will go for this one. Because they're going to head towards these guys. Even though you're in very good shape, Prince Oigan, I, I just don't... It doesn't make sense for one to go up against all these. Even though you probably could take them. This marine goes now. This is the, hopefully the time we launch torpedoes. Yeah, hopefully. Are they both your port side or starboard side? No, you still have one. Good. Okay, let's push more forward then. Oh, good. And that one's already dead, so it is the right move for us to move forward. Try to pen this. Oh, oh my gosh, the Adria was hit. How was the Adria hit? It's way over here. And they don't even have any ships in range. All right, well, this is very simple, very simple. We're gonna slow down a lot. Just, let's not risk losing a, a St. George II class. Oh, she doesn't have flooding. I guess it was instantly controlled, but still gonna pull you off. Yeah, we're finishing that one. Prince Ogan's trying to finish this one. Good. You are engaging that one correctly. You guys don't even have any torpedoes. No, you have one. Interesting. Oh, you're both different now. Okay, well, hey, which side is your torpedo? Oh, it's it's not accessible. You also have one torpedo. And it's on the starboard side, so the wrong side. Let's get you to swing around. 
Yeah, we're launching. We're killing the wrong Marengo class. That's fine. I mean, I, I don't need this other Marengo class. <laughs> I certainly want it, but let's get this guy. Hopefully, that'll launch him. That'll get him to launch his last torpedo. And the Kaiser, the oh, okay, the Prince Organ. Come on, Prince Organ. I need to see you hitting this Marengo class. I need to see that up here. Turn you away, Python. Even if that ship turns away, that's fine. I just don't. Would prefer not to lose a ship. We've done so well this far. That let's not lose a ship. Still pummeling that guy. That's fine. That's fine. And still nothing on the. Oh wait. Okay, so actually the Zent Ishvan is actually helping sink this Marine class as well. That's good news. Okay, there's a torpedo. Very good, Splato. Now you can get out of here. Oh, just missed too. That's fine. You did a good job. Made her turn. Keep bringing our Prince Oigan in. Bring our Jupiter in. And try to pay attention to this battle up here. Let's get these guys to just pull away. I don't see any reason to engage that. We've taken enough damage that I'm going to go ahead and call off the pursuit of the battle cruiser group. All right, so call off that pursuit, which means turn in, turn away, just sink this Marengo. That's it, and then we'll, we're done. Shouldn't be too hard. Got some more torpedoes going at this guy. It's gonna end her day pretty poorly. And good, we, we've really done a good job of slowing the Adria down. She hasn't taken any further damage. Oops, that's fine. Okay, that's the wrong one, but that's fine. This one's still active. Are all these the wrong one? Yeah, basically yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as soon as I see the Prince Oigan hit anything, I'll be happy. Not today, though. <laughs> I mean, she stopped. I don't know what, what happened, but she stopped anyway, so... We don't have to be too worried. There's the Prince Oigan hitting her. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Very good. Let's let all the ships run wild. Let AI control set in. They are pursuing though, that's a little troubling. Which one is this? Oh, very good. That's the one I wanted. Fantastic, okay. Well, let's just go ahead and head back to port. I don't wanna cause, I don't want anything more to happen. I'm a little worried. I'm taking enough hits and torpedo hits and all those things that let's just get out of here. And this should deter them from coming. I mean, they, we have just a floating... I mean, the carcass is everywhere. Just a total death and destruction of the French. Okay, St. Jupiter, just go the right way. However, we will need to... I will turn the Prince again. I will get these guys to protect my... Um, let's go to cruise speed. I'm going to protect my heavy cruisers. So can these guys, they can go cruise speed, so I'm gonna get them to go cruise speed. And we'll just uh, tow in around them so that we can protect them. Let me just go AI control so I don't have to worry about these guys. If they wanna fight, that's fine. We'll go ahead and fight them. But I think they're just recovering a lot of their French sailors that are now in the water. Okay. Pivot. And bring up the rear, Prince Oigan. Very good. Bring up the rear. Very good. There it is. Okay, very good. Now we just go run. Whoops. Yeah, just go ahead and run three hours. That's fine. Oof, what an engagement. Oh my gosh, what an engagement. So that was pretty intense. Well, just let them go to AI control eventually. 
Oops. Where's it again? Oh. Stop. Help me. There you go. Very good. Now, oh, there. What happened? Was that three hours? <laughs> now, where are you going? Yes, I got you. Very good. And we'll enter port with everyone. Oh, what a fight. What a fight. What an amazing fight. What an amazing fight. I'm sure this will be a two-parter, so I apologize that I didn't break it in the middle. Um, what an amazing fight. Honest to goodness, the only way we could have done any better is if we had chased down their battlecruiser group, but I did, we didn't need to. It was just so one-sided. Probably have four ships that don't even need to go to port. One for sure, which does, um, of the dreadnoughts. One heavy cruiser as well. Which one? Oh, yeah, the torpedo damage, of course. And it didn't lose a single ship. Killed two dreadnoughts, five battleships, two destroyers. Didn't lose a single ship. So one of my best performances that I've had, at least in this series and probably in quite a while so I can't say anything other than I'm extremely happy all our ships perform well I mean we didn't target the sunk ships too much when it when we started to every ship was a sunk ship so it didn't really matter <laughs> so um, this video has really dragged on quite some time though so I better call this to a close very quickly I'm gonna call this the 2BB5B and I will remember that that was for free I didn't mean to rhyme that, but that's just the way it happened. Great, so excellent victory for us. That should put us way ahead. I think that that's the last time that they'll be blockading us. So, um, yeah, they're down to 36 points. We're actually ahead. We might, we shouldn't be blockaded. Well, um, thanks for watching these two episodes since I didn't conclude the last video. But, I mean, it's a two-parter again, so... And I will catch you in the next video where hopefully, I, think, I, I guess we're really close to finishing the French War because um, they just, they can't stand these kind of losses much longer. So until then, everyone take care.